All right, well, what we're looking at here is an older model of the AEA PK-232, which is one of the uh, highest rated uh, TNCs or terminal node controllers of all time. And this one supports many other HF modes depending on what options this has been upgraded with. This appears to be one of the earliest revisions made and obviously it's got a problem. I received this from somebody else who had uh, noted that it suffered a power line event of some kind and uh, he claims to have replaced the uh, 5 volt voltage regulator. It's uh, 7805 and he claimed, replaced one other chip that is uh, also malfunctioning and he did not tell me which chip it was. So where I'm at right now is on power up it draws well over half an amp and triggers the overcurrent on my power supply and if I measure I'm just grabbing a convenient point here measuring 80 ohms from the 5 volt rail to ground, which is obviously too high. So proceeding from here, I already started here, I'm going to start try removing all of the socketed chips and see where that gets me. Alright, so here we are, I've removed all of the socketed chips and um, still measuring 83 ohms on the 5 volt bus, which still seems way too low for me. But, if I turn this on, let me do that now. I'm still drawing about 0.4 amps, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 amps. But, I now have front panel lights And, testing the 5 volt bus here, it is at 5 volts and not getting dragged down. So, I'm not quite sure what to make of this. But I'm going to start reintroducing chips and uh, see where a failure occurs. Okay, I've reintroduced these two small logic chips here. And powered on, had no effect whatsoever but reintroducing the Z80 processor and uh, watch the power supply as I turn this unit on. So the current jumps up and the power supply goes into current limiting mode. Now this power supply is only capable of half an amp. It is possible that this unit Draw, simply draws more than my power supply is capable of supplying, but I'm not sure about that. What I do know is that I have a spare Z80 processor, and I'm going to try that and uh, see if that makes any difference. All right, here is a different Z80 processor. This one is a known good processor. And let's take a look at the power supply as we turn the voltage on now, as we turn the switch on now. Alright, so I'm getting exactly the same behavior there. I'm wondering if this unit just exceeds the output capability of my power supply. But I am going to take a step backwards here because half an amp, or close to half an amp, at 12 volts going into the supply with none of the chips loaded should be making some heat somewhere and I would like to know where that heat is coming from. Alright, so none of those socketed, well, I've left those two glue logic chips in place and I've got the device powered on 12 volts and still over 0.4 amps into it. So something should be getting warm here and I'm curious as to what that is. I'm 
I'm just uh, using the old finger test method here. Unfortunately, I am not Dave Jones, and I do not have a, massive, a nice uh, FLIR camera to test these things with. Getting a fair amount of heat out of these two here. In fact, that chip is getting quite warm. That is a SN7518 November. I'm going to have to look that up. However, in the meantime, and as expected, my 7805 is getting quite warm. getting warmer over in this neighborhood here. I'm going to have to take another look at this, particularly this here, that is a 7406. And if I had to guess, that probably has something to do with driving the display in front. And it is possible that that is just supposed to run hot. Or it's also possible that it's generating additional heat since it's not receiving any drive signals since the uh, whole computer side of this, if you will, has been removed. All right, I've uh, removed the voltage regulator. Discovered some uh, damage to the board in that neighborhood. Doesn't affect operations, but the uh, through-hole plating of those holes has been ripped out. Um. The key problem I've found here so far, well, is that um, even with everything removed, the uh, still measuring 80 ohms across the 5 volt bus and the uh, circuit still drawing 0.3 of an amp at 12 volts. And I'm going to be, uh, you know, I will put the 5 volt. I will connect the 5 volt power supply directly and observe the current at 5 volts, but uh, that is going to be a fairly significant current. Um, this is that uh, 7406 that has gotten hot when I tested there. And a uh, couple of things about the 7406, and uh, the most important one is that it's uh, 95 cents quantity one on DigiKey. And uh, having no other convenient place to go, I'm going to remove that. And because I've noticed that this board seems to be relatively fragile, and the holes are relatively tight, and the solder sucker doesn't seem to want to work, I am just going to go for the destructive removal method, cut the leads, and pick the leads out one at a time. Alright, so I've removed that IC, painfully using about two and a half miles of solder wick since the uh, dikes that I have are not uh, precise enough and small enough to get in there and uh, cut the pins on the chip while it's in place. So, good news. On removing that chip, the, um, five, the uh, resistance from the uh, five volt bus to ground has immediately jumped up to three and a half kilo ohms so that uh, tells me that that chip was uh, shorted internally. So now I'm going to round up a socket to make it easier on the next guy. And uh, hopefully another 7406. So back with you shortly. So there is a socket installed. And now I'm going to be uh, searching for a 7406. Let me see what I can come up with. All right, the unit is uh, reassembled back in the case because the voltage regulator uh, still does not, um, well, they only used uh, two through-hole uh, pins of the three of the 7805 
the center pin has no place there. But that's okay because the uh, center pin is equivalent to the mounting tab. But the way this unit is designed is the uh, PCB has to be attached to the case and the mounting tab screwed down in order to have contact there. So I've reinstalled this in the case and I've reinstalled all of the chips and uh, readings seem to make a fair amount more sense. I still don't have a 7406 here. I have not been able to locate one in my parts bin. I think that 7406 is driving something to do with the front display or something like that, but I do not have the schematic in front of me. But anyway, I um, am still over the limit of my uh, half an amp uh, power supply, so I've uh, improvised with a uh, two amp switching wall wart and I've connected my uh, Fluke 8050 bench meter to read the current going into this here. Now as I turn this on, flash up to almost an amp for a second, and then it settles back down a little bit. I still think that may be a little bit high, but we have action on the front panel here. I'm gonna boot this again here. Here's the uh, front panel again and uh, clearly it's uh, executed at least some code here. So uh, now the next step is going to be to uh, find a 7406, get that installed in the socket that I've left for it, and to connect this thing to a serial port on a computer and uh, see if this works. I will be back with you again shortly. All right, here goes. This is gonna be the first uh, power on test connected to a computer. And I've got uh, putty open on the computer. And let's see if this thing does anything. Well, that was rather anticlimactic. Uh, absolutely nothing appears to be happening. So, I'm going to check around the serial interface and do some studying of the schematic and see if uh, possibly I might just have a bad serial driver or if we still have more major problems.